Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a modern v-neck bell sleeve top. For this v-neck top, we paired one of our favorite stitch combinations with this new bottom band that we've really been digging, added a luscious pointed bell sleeve for a hint of whimsy, and gave it a deeper v that can be flirty or show off an undershirt if you're trying to keep it cute. Love me some options. Speaking of, if you want options for all things crochet, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns with new patterns on the way weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 650 grams of yarn, and that's 1200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you've been to any national parks. Now, I think I have been to Yosemite National Park, but I was a little too young to remember. Details for the giveaway down below. We are using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. and half double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our five millimeter hook and start off by making a chain the length that we'd like for this top to be. Now we're starting with our bottom band, so placing our first chain right where our underbust is down to the length of the top. So this can be cropped or long. I want mine to reach right above my jeans. So I'm gonna start by making a chain that is five inches or 13 centimeters. And that's a chain of 22 for me. Now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a slip stitch row. Block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch. That is our turning chain. And we're gonna slip stitch into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that second chain. When we have those two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. Let's do that again. Into that following chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops, and just once more, into that following chain, insert, yarn over, pull through both, and continue putting one slip stitch into every chain. And make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row could be a little bit too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, our falling rows are going to be back loop slip stitches. So just get started on the falling row, chain one, and flip your work. Now we're going to start by finding that last stitch from our previous row, and we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, Yarn over and gently pull through both loops. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over and gently pull through both loops, and that is it. We're going to continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. So one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're going to continue our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until this portion of our band can reach from mid underarm and making sure that we are stretching it as if we're wearing it over to mid collarbone, and I will meet you back right after an odd number row. The first bit of my bottom band is all finished. I have a total of 17 rows and my width is two and a half inches or six centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows, but increasing along one side until we reach mid chest. Right before we get started on the following row, we're gonna insert our stitch marker into the edge of this last odd number row that we have. And once we've inserted our stitch marker, we're gonna get started on our falling row, which is gonna start with an increase. 
So let's all start with a chain two and flip your work. Now for that chain two that we did, that first chain that we made is gonna count as a stitch and that second chain is gonna count as a chain. So doing our increase, we're going to insert our hook into that second chain from our hooks back loop. So we're gonna skip this first chain into that following chain, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. And from here, we're gonna continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and I'll meet you back to increase just once more. I finished up my increase row. At the end of the increase row, I did a chain one, flip my work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and we're gonna start our following row with another increase. So just to do it together, we're gonna to chain one, that first chain is gonna count as a stitch, and then make a second chain, and that second chain is gonna count as a chain, and flip our work. And now from here, inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook, insert into that back loop, gently pull through everything, and then that's it. Continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we now have a bottom band that can stretch from mid underarm over to mid chest. And I'll meet you back right after an odd number row. So I am back and the increase portion of my bottom band is finished. I have a total of 27 rows and my width is now four inches or 10 centimeters, still unstretched. And now we're going to do a middle row. The middle row is gonna be pretty simple. Since we all ended along the top, we're just gonna put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So at the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work and then make our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. But before we make our way all the way down, we're going to want to insert our stitch marker into the top of this row so we know right where the middle row is. And we're gonna continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, we're gonna get started on the decrease side of our bottom band. So chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we have two stitches left and then we'll decrease together. Our middle row is complete. We started our following row by doing a chain one, flipping our work and putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two. Now let's do a decrease of two back loop slip stitch together. Insert your hook into that second to last stitch's back loop, pull through, and then also into that last stitch's back loop. When we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. That is our first decrease row. Getting started on our following row, chain one, flip our work, and since we only did an increase into every other row along the increase side, we're gonna be doing a decrease into every other row. So this row is not gonna be a decrease row. So put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch working down towards the base. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two once more to decrease together one more time. We finished up our back loop slip stitch row working down towards the bottom. At the end of the row, we chained one, Flipped our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two to decrease together once more. So inserting your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through and into that last back loop, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops, chain one, flip our work, and then do our back loop slip stitch row. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as the increase rows that we did, making sure that we're not including that middle row. When we have the same amount of rows, I'll meet you back to finish up the front bottom band. The decrease portion of my bottom band is finished. I have a total of 38 rows and my width is now five and a half inches or 13 centimeters, unstretched. And now we're gonna finish off our front panel's bottom band by doing back loop slip stitch rows for the same amount of rows that we started this piece off with. So from here, we're gonna chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you back at the end of the following row just to remind you that we need to insert our stitch marker into the end of that row so it can match this stitch marker along this side. So now that we've made our way up with our back loop slip stitch row, the first row that we have for this last section of our bottom band, we're going to insert our stitch marker into that last stitch that we have so we know where this portion starts. And from here, continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows till we have the same amount of rows as this portion right over here, and then I'll meet you guys back. 
The entirety of my bottom band is all finished. I have a total of 55 rows and my width is now 8 inches or 20 centimeters unstretched. And now we're going to single crochet along the top of our piece, which is the pointed end, to clean it up. We all should have ended along the top or right after an odd number row. So from here, we're going to chain one. And we're going to put one single crochet into every side row. So this is my first side row that I have right here. It is this divot. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with a single crochet. To do the next, we're going to find our following side row's top loop, which is this raised row. Find that top loop, single crochet again. Let's do just one more set together. My following side row is this divot. Find that top loop, insert with a single. Find my following side row, which is this raised row. Insert with another single. And we're going to continue putting one single crochet into every side row. We should have the same amount of single crochets as side rows that we have in total. And don't forget to insert your stitch markers into those same stitches because we need to know where those are when we get started with the body piece. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, I will meet you back. So now that our single crochet row is finished, we're going to get started on our front panel. I already got one side done, but it's going to be done exactly the same way on both sides. So right before we get started, we're going to want to insert our stitch marker into any stitch that we have that's nearest to the point of our bottom band because we're going to have a collar as well. Now I'd like for my collar to be just about an inch or two centimeters. So from my middle stitch marker, I've inserted my next stitch markers into the third stitch away, but I am including that middle stitch as well. So a total of four stitches. So just to show you, here's my middle stitch. There's one, two, three, and four. Now I did the same thing on both sides and this is going to be the width of my collar. Now from here, we're gonna get started on the underarm portion for our front panel. So let's all start with a chain two and flip our work. And this will be the same for all sizes. Now after our chain two, we're all gonna start with an increase of three single crochets into that second chain from our hook. So we're gonna skip one into that second chain. We're gonna insert with three single crochets. So here is one, here is two, and then lastly, here is three. Now that we have our first single crochet row finished, we're gonna need to slip stitch it into the base. So finding that next available stitch, we're going to insert our hook in through there, yarn over, pull through everything, and now our row one is complete. And that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it into the base. Working our way up to the following row, we're going to insert our hook into that next stitch into the base. Also with another slip stitch that still doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain and flip our work. Now that our work is flipped, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last. So for every size, since we should all have a total of three stitches for our row one, we're gonna be doing two single crochets. So finding the last stitch from our previous row, not counting those slip stitches. We're going to insert into there with one single crochet into that following stitch with another single crochet and we should all have one stitch left and into there we're going to be doing an increase of two single crochets so here is one and then into that same last stitch a second single crochet and that is everyone's row two the following row in our row sequence is going to be a moss stitch row so from here, we're going to chain one. That chain counts as a turning chain. We're going to chain a second chain for a total of two. And that second chain that we made counts as a chain and we're now going to flip our work. So to get started on our third row in our row sequence, we're going to skip that first stitch. And then into the stitch right after that, we're going to be doing an increase of three single crochets. So skipping that first stitch, we're gonna insert our hook into that following stitch with one single. And if you'd like to pull your work apart, that also forms our first chain space for the moss stitches. Into that same stitch, a second single crochet, and then into that same stitch, a third single crochet. Now all together, we should have one, which is our chain space, two, three, four stitches done. And from here, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, which is the second to last stitch, and then single crochet into the last. 
And now that we have that, we should be at the base, so let's slip stitch it into the base. So inserting your hook into that next stitch into the base with a slip stitch to connect. To work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, those slip stitches still don't count as a stitch, and flip our work. And the fourth row in our four row row sequence is going to be another moss stitch row. So since we're along the base, we're all going to chain one, skip one stitch, which should be the single crochet from our previous row, and then into that next stitch, which should be that chain space, insert with one single crochet. And that forms our first chain space and our first stitch. Again, we're going to chain one, skip the following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, which is a single crochet, insert with a single crochet. And then from here, chain one, skip the following stitch, and then into that last stitch that we have, which should be a chain space. It may be a little hard to see, but it is there. We're gonna do an increase of three single crochets. So into that chain space, insert with one, with two, and then into that same chain space once more with three single crochets. Now these four rows is our row sequence. So two single crochets and two moss stitch rows. So let's do the following four rows together. Getting started on a row five, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now getting started on the first row in our row sequence, it's going to be a single crochet. And we're gonna start that row off with an increase of two single crochets. So insert with one into that same first stitch with a second single crochet. And now from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch till we reach the base. Now for this row five, we're going to have a total of seven single crochets. That's not including our increase. So now that we've put one single crochet into every stitch, into the base, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch and then into the stitch right after that to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch and flip our work. Now for everyone's row six, we're gonna put one single crochet into every stitch and then do an increase of two into that last. So we should have a total of eight single crochets and then our increase. So find the last stitch from our previous row and start by putting one single crochet into every stitch. Into the last stitch from our previous row, insert with an increase of two. So there's one and there's two. At the end of every second single crochet row, we should have an even number of stitches. So just to count ours out together, this is our row six, so we should all have a total of 10 stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And from here, we're gonna get started on our boss stitch row. That's gonna start with a chain two. That first chain is gonna count as a turning chain, and that second chain is gonna count as a chain, and we're gonna flip our work. Now, like I said, to do the first moss stitch row for our row sequence, we're going to skip that first stitch, and then into that following stitch, an increase of three. So start with one single crochet, that forms our first chain space for this row. And then two more single crochets into that same stitch. So there's two, and then there's three. All together, we should have a total of four stitches. And then from here, we're going to chain one, skip one stitch into the following, insert with a single crochet. And again, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the following, and continue this until we reach the end of the row, and we should end on a single crochet. Now our row seven is finished. We're gonna slip stitch it into the base. So into that next stitch, insert with a slip stitch, into that next stitch into the base, insert with another slip stitch to work our way up to the following row and flip our work. And to finish up this row sequence, our last row in our four row row sequence is going to be another moss stitch row. So we're gonna start this row with a chain one, skip that first stitch, which should be a single crochet from our previous row, single crochet into that following stitch, which should be our chain space. Insert with one single crochet, forming our chain space and stitch. Chain one, skip that following stitch into that next stitch, which is another chain space, single crochet. And continue this until we have two stitches left. Now I've made my way down with my moss stitch and we have two stitches left. It may look like we just have one stitch, but that chain space at the end of the row is there. So here's one and here's two for me. So what we're gonna do at the end of this row is chain one into that chain space that we started our previous row off with an increase of three single crochets. So into that first stitch, there's one, 
So into that last stitch, there's one, there's two, and there's three single crochets. And that is that. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our four previous rows until this underarm portion, making sure that we're placing this single crochet row right at our under bust, can reach about an inch underneath our underarm. And I'll meet you back right after an even number row. So just as a refresher, two single crochet rows that have an increase of two along the outer edge. Our first moss stitch row in our row sequence is gonna start with a chain space and then an increase of three single crochets. And then our following moss stitch row is going to end with an increase of three single crochets. I'll meet you back when I have my underarm portion all finished. I am back and my underarm is all finished. I have a total of 14 rows. And right before we get started, I just wanted to show you guys that our work will end up curving just a little bit and then the bottom band will curve as well. But if we're placing this up to ourselves, making sure that we're stretching it as if we're wearing it, it should all become roughly one really straight line along the outer edge, which is what we want. Now what we're gonna do from here is the width of our front panel. So this is just gonna be our two single crochet rows and our two moss stitch rows working our way in towards the middle of our body. Now before we get started, we're going to insert a stitch marker into this last increase row that we have right here. And that's going to be easier for us once we get started on seaming the sides. And now that we have that, all we're gonna do is our two single and two moss stitch rows, like I said, but with no increases and no decreases this time. And it's going to cut in just like this. So to get the following row started, it may be a little bit different for everyone at this point, but we're just going to do the following row in a row sequence. So if your last increase row was a moss stitch row, your following row will be a single crochet row. But if you're like me and your last row was a single crochet row, we're going to do a moss stitch row. So for those of us that are starting this off with a moss stitch row, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Since we aren't doing any increases or decreases, all we're gonna do is skip that first stitch into the stitch right after that, insert with one single crochet. That does form our chain space and our first stitch, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip that following stitch and single crochet. Continue on with our moss stitch, making our way down to the base. For those of you that need to get started on this portion with a single crochet row, you are going to chain one, flip your work and put one single crochet into every stitch. But I'll show you how to do that in the next clip. So I've made my way down with my moss stitch row when it comes to the width of my front panel. And we're just gonna slip stitch it into the base. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base to close off this first row. Now this is my stitch marker stitch that I inserted when we were doing our bottom band. We don't need this anymore. That was just to make sure that we kept track of the amount of rows that we had. So I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna get started on my following row, which is a moss stitch row. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work. And from here, we're going to chain one, skip that first stitch into the stitch right after that, single crochet, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. Making sure that we're working into that first chain space that we made, because it could look like it's not there. All right, so my first two moss stitch rows for the width of the front panel is finished. Now, for those of you that ended your increase portion on a moss stitch row, what you guys will be doing is chain one, flip your work, and from here, just put one single crochet into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. And your falling row will be another single crochet row, and that's it. From here, we're going to continue on with our row sequence. So two single crochet rows and then two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until this portion that we have reaches the front of our body. Now doing this portion is completely up to you. We wanna make sure that we're leaving enough stitches that's right before our stitch marker stitch where we want the band to be because we do wanna have a little bit of a shoulder strap as well with our row sequence. So I'm gonna continue this until I actually have two stitches right before my stitch marker left. If you would like for this detail to be a little bit thicker then leave more available stitches into the base. But either way, I will meet you back right after an even number row. So the width of my front panel is finished. I now have a total of 22 rows and my width from my stitch marker to my working yarn is two and a half inches or six centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our shoulder. So what we're going to do is make a chain from where we're at that reaches all the way up to the top of our shoulder. I needed a total of five inches or 13 centimeters, so I made a chain of 20 and we wanna make sure that this is an even number. 
Now our first shoulder row may be a little bit different for everyone. We're going to continue on with our row sequence of two single crochet rows and then two moss stitch rows for this row that we're about to get started. My last row was my second single crochet row, so my next row is going to be a moss stitch row. If your last row is your second moss stitch row, this will be your first single crochet row for the shoulder. So getting started on our following row, no matter which row we're getting started with first, we're all going to chain one and flip our work. Now for those of us that are getting started with our moss stitch row, we're going to start by doing a single crochet into that third chain from our hook. So here's my first, my second, and my third. I'm going to insert my hook in through that third chain with one single crochet, and that should form our first chain space. From there, I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the following stitch. And that's it for me. I'm going to continue to do my moss stitch, making my way all the way down, connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing, and this shoulder portion will not have any increases or decreases. So I'm just going to repeat my two moss stitch and two single crochet rows until I reach our collar stitch marker stitch, making sure that we're not working into that stitch. Now the rules are the same if your first row is a single crochet row. Just do your two single crochet rows with no increases and no decreases, two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until you reach your stitch marker as well. Do a chain up a wooden cut when we have that and then I will meet you back. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up one of my cups. I actually have both of mine done, but all we're gonna do from here is insert our hook into the corner stitch of the other side of our front panel since yours shouldn't be done, and then repeat everything we just did here. When we have both of those done, we can get started on the back panel. So getting started with our back panel, we're getting started with our bottom band just like how we did for the front panel. So we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the front panel's bottom band. So for me, a chain of 22. And then all we're gonna do from here is do our back loop slip stitch rows until this can stretch from mid underarm across our back to mid underarm, making sure that we end on an odd number. Now my bottom band for my back panel's finished. I have a total of 53 rows, and now we're going to single crochet across the top. But right before we get started with the single crochet row, we're gonna to wanna to insert our stitch marker into the middle row that we have. So for me, I inserted my stitch marker into the 27th row, and we should all just have one middle row since we made an odd number of rows. Now to do the single crochet row, it's gonna be done exactly the same way that we did the front panel. So we're gonna chain one and start working into the side of our rows. So this is my first side row right here. It's this divot. I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop with a single crochet. This is my following side row, which is this raised row. Insert my hook into that top loop with another single crochet, and that's it. Continue to work our way across the top of our bottom band, making sure that we're inserting our stitch marker into that same middle stitch. I'll meet you back once we don't have any more side rows left. So our single crochet row is finished, and now we're gonna get started on the underarm for the back panel. So we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of side rows that we have for the front panel's underarm. So for those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 14 of those rows, so I will now be making a chain of 14. Now that we have our chain, we're all gonna get started on our first single crochet row. So I'm gonna block off that last chain, do a chain one, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with two single crochets. That is an increase of two. From here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every chain until we reach the end of the row. Now that we're at the bottom, we're gonna be slip stitching it into the base the same way that we have been doing for the entirety of the front panel. So find the following stitch into the base, slip stitch, and that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, so that's just to connect our work. And to work our way up to our following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, those still don't count as stitches, and flip our work. And from here, we're gonna put one single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. Now we are still doing our same two single crochet and two moss stitch rows for this back panel sequence as well. So now that I have just one stitch left, we're going to do an increase of two single crochets. So insert your hook in through that last stitch with two single crochets, and that is that. Now our following row is going to be a moss stitch row, so let's chain one, that's gonna count as our turning chain, chain a second chain, that's gonna count as a chain, and we need to increase into this row as well. So we're gonna skip that first stitch, and into the stitch after that, we're going to do an increase of three single crochets. So there's my first, my second and my third single crochet, that is our increase, and we should have a total of four stitches because remember we are counting that chain space as well. 
and from here a regular moss stitch. So chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet to reach the end of the row. We are now at the end of our row three, so let's slip stitch it into the base again. So same way that we've been doing, still doesn't count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and this is a moss stitch row. So we're going to chain one, skip that first stitch, which should be a single crochet, and then single crochet into that next stitch, which should be a chain space. That forms our first chain space for this row. Then we're gonna chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, and continue this until we have two stitches left. I've done my moss stitches all the way down. I should have two stitches left. So now I'm gonna chain one and into that last stitch, which may be a little hard to see, but it is a chain space. We're gonna do an increase of three single crochets into there. And that's that. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these four previous rows until we get an underarm portion that reaches mid collarbone, but remembering that this is the back panel. I'll meet you back right after an even number row. Now my underarm for my back panel is all finished. I have a total of 10 rows, and now from here, we're going to make an even number chain that reaches up to the top of our shoulder. I need a total of five inches or 13 centimeters, so I'm gonna be making a chain 20. Then right after that, we're gonna be continuing with our row sequence. So since my last row was my second single crochet row, my following row is going to be a moss stitch row, a second moss stitch row after that, then two single crochet rows. We're just gonna continue on with our row sequence until we reach the middle stitch marker along the bottom of our bottom band. Once we do, do a chain of one and cut. Then we're going to repeat everything we just did here for this first half of the back panel, for the second half of the back panel, but for the second one, do not do a chain of one and cut so that we can easily seam everything together. So both halves of my back panel are finished. Now that we have made our way over to our stitch marker stitch, we're going to seam everything together. So let's fold our work in half and then insert our hook into both the corner stitch of the front and the back panel. This is going to be a single crochet seam. So now that our hook is into both corners, we're gonna pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're gonna find the first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, find that first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and we should have one tail end. If you'd like to weave in your tail ends as you go, just place that over your hook, and then single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, next stitch in through the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. And we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that the back is all seamed up, we're ready to seam the sides. So we're first gonna start by seaming up the bottom band. We're going to make sure the work is flipped right side out, meaning the seam that we have for the back panel is faced up towards us, and then the front panel is laid on top. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel, Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's get started. We're gonna find the first stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. And then we're gonna find the next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this again. Find the next stitch into the front panel, insert only into that front loop, Next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us, and pull through all three, and that's it. Continue doing our outside loop slip stitch seam until we have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made when we started our bottom band. So for me, I will have a total of 22 outside loop slip stitch seams, and that should be right where our single crochet row is before we got started on the front and back panel. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we'll seam the sides. Now that our bottom band is seamed up, we're going to do a single crochet seam. So the same seam that we did for the back panel, working our way up until we don't have any more stitches left or until we reach our stitch marker. So this is going to be a single crochet seam. We need our work to now be flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we did for the back panel is along the outside. And we're gonna insert our hook into the side row that we have for the single crochet row that we did on top of our bottom band within the front and the back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every stitch or side row for when we're working into the front panel. So let's do this together. 
We're going to find that first stitch into this panel. Insert your hook. We're going to find the first side row into the front panel, which this is my first side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook into there. And if you're like me, we, sh we should have a couple tail ends to weave in. So place those over your hook and single crochet. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch that I have into this panel, insert, and then I'm going to find my following side row within my front panel, insert into that top loop, and then single crochet. And then that's it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way up until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the back panel, or if you're looking at the front panel, until we reach our stitch marker stitch. When we have that, do a chain up a one and cut. And now that the entirety of our side is seamed up, we're going to seam our shoulders. So this is going to be pretty simple. This is going to be another single crochet seam. So let's make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out. And then we're going to insert our hook into both the corner stitch of the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every side row, making sure we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's do this together. Into that first side row that I have, which is my moss stitch row, I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. Finding the first side row within my front panel, find that top loop and single crochet. And since I only have two rows for my shoulder within the front panel, I just have one more single crochet to do. So finding my following side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop. Following row within the front panel, insert your hook and single crochet. And I am all done. From here, I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut. And now I'm gonna repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed together, we're now gonna get started on our sleeve. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Next, we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam and do a single crochet row. So go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch, working our way all the way up and over. And then once we reach this portion, put one single crochet into every side row again. And we wanna make sure that we're using a medium to loose grip for this single crochet row. So let's just do the first few. This is my first side row that I have right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there. And if you guys are like me, you should have a tail end. So I'm just gonna place that over my hook and single crochet. Let's do the next one. This is my following side row right over here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop and single crochet again, and that's it. I'm gonna continue my single crochet row, making my way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. Our first single crochet row for our sleeve is finished. Now our row sequence for our sleeve is still going to be two single crochet rows and then two moss stitch rows. But for the first portion of our shoulder, we're going to need to curve over our shoulder. So our single crochet rows is going to have some half double crochets into it as well. So this counts as my first single crochet row and my second single crochet row is going to have half doubles. So right after we slip stitch into that chain space, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And now that our work is flipped for every size, we're all going to start with 10 single crochets. So into the last stitch from our previous row, insert with your first single and then continue putting one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches for a total of 10. Now that I have my 10 single crochets, we're now going to be putting one half double crochet into every stitch until we have 10 stitches left because we're going to close off this row with 10 single crochets again. So yarn over into that following stitch with a half double and continue putting one half double crochet into every stitch until we have 10 stitches left. We're now at the end of our row two and we should all have 10 stitches left. Now to close off this row, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. So into that following stitch, insert with one single, following stitch, insert with a single, and continue this until we reach the end of the row. We have finished up our row two, we have slip stitched into that chain space, and now we're gonna get started on our following moss stitch row. So to get started on our first moss stitch row, we're going to chain two and flip our work, and we wanna make sure that we're flipping our work after every row. Now our moss stitch rows are gonna be pretty simple. We're going to skip that first stitch from our previous row, but keeping in mind that the first loop that we have right here may look like a stitch, but that actually doesn't count because that's the slip stitch that we just made to close off the row. 
So counting from our second stitch, just double check and make sure that we have an even number of stitches in total because every row should end on an even number. We're going to skip that first stitch and then in through that following, insert with a single crochet, forming our first chain space. Let's do this again. We're gonna chain one, skip that following stitch and then single crochet into the next. And we're gonna continue this making our way all the way down. Our last stitch should be a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. I am back and my first three rows are finished. Our following row, our fourth row, is still going to be a moss stitch row. So chain two and flip our work. Now after we flipped our work, we're going to do the same moss stitch row that we've been doing. So we're going to skip that first stitch, which should be a single crochet from our previous row, into that following stitch, which should be our chain space. Insert with a single crochet, forming our first chain space for this row. Chain one, skip a stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row, and then in through that next stitch, which is a chain space, a single crochet. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around. And just as a quick tip, we should have the same amount of moss stitch sets as our previous row, since we didn't do any increases or decreases. Our second moss stitch row is finished, and all together we should have one, two, three, four rows finished. We're now going to continue on with our four row sequence, which is two single crochet rows and then two moss stitch rows, but now we're gonna be decreasing into the single crochet rows and the single crochet rows. We'll have the half double crochets with them as well because we need this to curve over our shoulder. So from here, we're going to chain one and flip our work. Now the decrease sequence is going to be the same for every size. So we're gonna start and end the row off with a decrease of two single crochets and then 10 single crochets into the stitches after that. So we're gonna start and end the row with a decrease of two single crochets. So inserting our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, which is the top of that single crochet, making sure that we're not working into the top of that slip stitch, that doesn't count as a stitch, it just looks like a stitch. So into the top of that single crochet from our previous row, pull through into that following stitch, which is actually our chain space now, pull through, pull through all three, and then right after our decrease, for every size, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. So just to do the first one, my following stitch is a single crochet stitch, so insert with one single crochet into that following stitch, which is a chain space, and another single crochet. Continue this until we have a total of 10 single crochets, not including our decrease. So I now have my 10 single crochets, including my decrease stitch, should have 11 stitches right here. And from here, we're gonna be putting one half double crochet into every stitch, working our way up and over until we all have a total of 12 stitches left. And those 12 stitches is gonna count for the 10 single crochets plus an additional two for the decrease. I've made my way all the way around with my half double crochets for my row five. I have a total of 12 stitches left. So from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, and then we should have two stitches left so that we can decrease together. I just finished up my 10 single crochets. Into my following two stitches, I'm now gonna do a decrease of two single crochets. So into that second to last stitch, insert, pull through, and then into that last stitch, which may be a little hard to see, but it is going to be a chain space. Insert your hook in through there, pull through, pull through all three, and then we're going to slip stitch into that chain space. And now our row five is finished. Getting started on row six, it's actually gonna be a repeat of our row five. So chain one and flip our work. So just as a refresher, we're gonna start with a decrease of two single crochets. So into that last stitch from our previous row, pull through into the stitch right after that, pull through, pull through all three, and then put one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. Now that I have my 10 single crochets, one half double crochet into every stitch until we have a total of 12 stitches left, and then I'll meet you back. We've put one half double crochet into every stitch until we had a total of 12 stitches left, and now one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, leaving the last two to decrease together once more. My 10 single crochets is finished, and into the last two stitches from this row, a decrease of two. And that is our decrease of two single crochets. We're now gonna slip stitch it into that chain space, 
and our following rows are going to be moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. So getting started on our first moss stitch row for our row sequence, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Just like our previous moss stitch row, we're going to find the first stitch from our previous row, making sure we're not looking at that slip stitch, insert into the stitch right after that, forming our first chain space, and then repeat. So chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet. Continue this, making our way all the way around, and our last stitch should be a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. Our row seven is now all finished up, which was our first moss stitch row. And just to do the following moss stitch row together, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and we're gonna skip that first stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that single crochet, into that following stitch, which is our chain space, one single crochet, forming our first chain space. Chain one, skip a stitch, into that following stitch, a single crochet, and then that's it. From here, we're going to repeat our two previous rows. So our two single crochet rows, that starts and ends with a decrease of two single crochets, and then two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. Now we're gonna continue these four rows until we get a shoulder portion that becomes nice and snug around our arm. Now this is going to be completely up to you and how tight you'd like the sleeve to be, but I'll meet you back right after our second moss stitch row. All right, so I am back. The first 20 rows for my shoulder is all finished up. My armhole is now nice and snug around my arm. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our single crochet rows, which is a single crochet rows that has the half double crochet rows within it as well, but now without any increases or decreases because we need this to lay horizontally on our arm when we wear it. So we should have all ended right after our second moss stitch row. So all we're gonna do from here is chain one, flip our work, do 10 single crochets, half double crochet all the way around, and then close our row off with 10 single crochets. So let's do this first row together. So we have slip stitched into that chain space. We're gonna find that first stitch from our previous row with a single crochet. And like I said, we are all gonna be putting one single crochet into the first 10 stitches. Now that our first 10 single crochets are finished, we're now gonna be putting one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last 10 to close it off, 10 single crochets. I've made my way up and over with my half double crochets. I have 10 stitches left, so now I'm gonna close this row off with 10 single crochets. Now that this first single crochet row is finished, I have slip stitched into that chain space. Our second single crochet row is going to be a repeat. So after we slip stitch into that chain space, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, put one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, one half double crochet into every stitch, making my way up and over, and then single crocheting into each of the last 10 stitches. Then our two following moss stitch rows, and none of these four rows will have any increases or decreases. We're going to continue to repeat these four rows until our sleeve now is completely horizontal on our arm when we wear it, and I'll meet you back after our second moss stitch row again. All right, so the curved portion of my sleeve is all finished up. I have a total of 28 rows, and my last row sits horizontally on my arm. From here, we're gonna work on the length of our sleeve. So it's going to be two single crochet rows and they're actual single crochet rows now, no half double crochets within them, and then two moss stitch rows. And we aren't gonna have any increases or decreases until we reach our elbow so we can start working on the bell sleeve. So right after our second moss stitch row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, one single crochet into every stitch. Our following row is going to be another single crochet row, one into every stitch, and then two moss stitch rows after that. I'll meet you back right after our second moss stitch row once we have a sleeve that reaches our elbow. The length of my sleeve is finished. I have a total of 44 rows, and the last row that I did was our second moss stitch row. Now we're going to start working on our bell sleeve. So right after we do our slip stitch into that chain space, we're going to switch out to our six millimeter hook, and now we can get started. So let's all start with the chain two and flip our work. Now when it comes to doing our single crochet rows, we are going to start and end our single crochet rows with an increase of three half double crochets. So all together, we're gonna yarn over, inserting your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that single crochet. We're gonna insert with one half double into that same stitch, two, and then into that same stitch, three half double crochets. And from here, we're gonna put one single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one to do an increase of three again. 
Now that we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, we should have one stitch left. And into that last stitch, we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets again. So yarn over, into that last stitch, insert with one half double, into that same last stitch with a second half double, and then same last stitch once more with a third half double crochet. And now to close off this row, we're going to slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we start off this row. So count up one, count up two into that second chain insert with a slip stitch. And now this first increase row for our bell sleeve is finished. Our second single crochet row is going to be done the exact same way. So chain two and flip our work. So we're going to start this row off with an increase of three half double crochets. Yarn over, find the top of that last half double crochet from our previous row. Remembering that that first loop that we have looks like a stitch, but it's actually just a slip stitch that we made. Insert your hook in through there with one, two, and three half double crochets. And from here, one single crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. So we've made our way around, putting one single crochet into every stitch. Into the last one, we're going to do an increase of three half double crochets. So yarn over, in through that last stitch, insert with your first, insert with your second, and then again, insert with your third half double crochet, and then slip stitch it into that second chain. So count up one, count up two. Slip stitch into that second chain, and now we're going to chain two again, but because we're getting started on our first moss stitch row. So chain two, flip our work, and then from here we're going to do our two moss stitch rows per usual. Our moss stitch rows will not have any increases or decreases. From here we're going to continue these four rows. So two single crochet rows that start and end with an increase of three half double crochets. Then after that, two moss stitch rows and then repeat. Now we're just going to continue to repeat these four rows until we get the length of the bell sleeve that we want. So you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. Once we have that finished up, do a chain up of one cut, repeat everything we just did here on the other side, and then I will meet you back. Both of my sleeves are finished. I had a total of 86 rows. And now we can get started on the collar. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is flipped right side out. So we're going to start by inserting our five millimeter hook into the same stitch that that last front panel row was worked into. We want to make sure that we're not working into that stitch marker stitch because we want those stitches for the collar portion. So into that same stitch that the last row is worked into, insert your hook, insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and now we're going to single crochet up our cup, up our shoulders, across our back, and then back down. So just to do the first one, we're going to do a chain up of one to secure. Find the first stitch from this row, insert your hook with a single crochet. And that's basically it. We're going to continue putting one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up and over. And working on top of our back panel, we should have a bunch of side rows to work into but we're just going to be putting one single crochet into each of those side rows as well. And I'll meet you back once we work into the side row that's right next to our back seam. All right, so now that we have single crocheted all the way up and we have worked into that last side row right before our back seam, we're going to insert our stitch marker into that stitch because this is one of our middle stitches. And then working our way into that following side row, which is on the other side of our back seam, we're going to insert a stitch marker into there as well. So find our following side row, insert into there, and then insert a stitch marker into there as well. And from here, continue to work our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that same stitch that this last row is worked into. So it should be the stitch right before our stitch marker stitch right over here. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So our single crochet row is all finished. Now we're going to start working on the width of our collar. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to be inserting our five millimeter hook into the corner stitch that we have into the bottom band. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and then we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch. So I'm going to take out the side stitch marker because I don't need it anymore. And we're going to start by putting our first single crochet into that same middle stitch because that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So there is one single crochet. There is two. There is 
three, and then I should have one more since I left a total of four stitches available. And now we're gonna connect it into the base. So we're gonna start by finding that next available stitch into the base, which this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there, yarn over and pull through everything. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it into the base. And now we're gonna slip stitch up that next available stitch into the base to work our way up to the falling row, still doesn't count as a stitch and flip our work. And now that our work is flipped, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So finding that last stitch from our previous row, making sure we're not looking at those two slip stitches, insert in through that back loop, pull through everything, next back loop, pull through everything, and continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And when you have reached the end of the row like me, chain one, flip our work, and then make our way back down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And now that we're back at the base, we're gonna slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base to close off this odd number row. And then to work our way up to our following even number row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and then that's it. We should have the same amount of stitches as stitches that we left for ourselves when we started our front panel, all the way up until we reach our stitch marker stitch along the back. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything that we did here on this other side. But once we reach the stitch marker stitch along the back, for the second one, do not do a chain up of one and cut so we can easily seam it all together. So I've made my way all the way around with my back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into, and now we're going to seam our work together. So let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out because this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. We're gonna insert our hook in through the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And then let's do the first one together since this is going to be the same seam that we did for the sides. We're gonna insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel's front loop. And then into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and then that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. And now that our collar is seamed, we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.